For the fourth tier in this module, we're going to zip through these antibiotics and see how our cases are doing. Did we keep them all alive by our clinical choices? You'll just have to wait and find out. As mentioned briefly in the last tier, syphilis may require different treatments based on the stage of disease. In industrialized nations, it's extremely rare to see anything but primary syphilis. This is why you're probably safe to remember that this is one of the few bugs still susceptible to good old penicillin after all this time. We can't seem to rid the world of this pathogen, but at least it hasn't grown resistance to our antibiotics. Yet. A shot in the butt and you're good to go, though there are other oral beta-lactams that can be used as well. Of course, the dreaded penicillin allergy questions can throw a wrench in your plans. If this is the case, the next line of treatment is often doxycycline, though this bug is usually susceptible to many genres. For an OBGYN rotation, and the shelf exams if you have to take those for each specialty, it is also important to know that doxycycline is contraindicated in newborns. Since congenital syphilis is also very bad for a baby, we have to do something. The best step is to desensitize the allergic mother slowly to penicillin. The details are beyond the scope of this class, and usually beyond the scope of step 1 material, but might come up during rounds. Lastly, if you are in Doctors Without Borders, or perhaps have a recent immigrant patient and happen to run into tertiary syphilis, remember that intramuscular injections and oral medications are not sufficient. They will not cross the blood-brain barrier. If the medication does not get to the brain, where the microbe currently is, then it can't kill it. Luckily, intravenous penicillin is able to cross more readily. Okay, all of these exceptions to the general rule could be a bit confusing. To sum up, Penicillin is first choice on most questions, unless the patient's allergic. If the allergy is in pregnancy, it's best to desensitize the mother to the allergen. If in a non-pregnant patient over 10 years old, doxycycline is the next best. Penicillin is also still effective in tertiary syphilis, but it has to be IV penicillin. As Lyme disease may go undiagnosed, it can be difficult to treat. Treatment is also said to not be needed if the tick was there for less than 24 hours. Sure, I know I started my stopwatch every time I get bit by a tick, and then just leave it there overnight. Despite the bacteria being fairly susceptible to doxycycline, like many tick-borne diseases, some patients report feeling symptomatic for weeks after treatment. It is not uncommon for individuals to have a post-infection reaction. This, and the fact that current lab medicine is unable to determine from a past infection and a current infection, has led to the misnomer of chronic Lyme disease. Doxycycline is not recommended for anyone under 10 years old, so in the pediatric population, you would use amoxicillin. With lepto, we are pretty much in the same boat. Doxycycline is usually recommended for treatment, except for the pediatric population. If the child has a severe penicillin allergy, then we might want to consider using doxycycline despite the contraindications. We'll cover more contraindications and side effects in the next module. We come back to Mr. Drusen, our 26-year-old male with substance use disorder, to see that his arm is decreased in size and redness compared to yesterday. We look over his lab results, and his blood cultures came back positive for methicillin-sensitive Staphylococcus aureus. Sonography was negative for subdermal abscess, and an echo was negative for heart vegetations as well. So we didn't need to do an incision to drain an abscess, and we won't need to keep him on weeks of antibiotics for potential endocarditis. He lucked out this time. Now may be a proper time to switch him to an antibiotic with a lower side effect profile, and that is more appropriate for his non-resistant strain. A beta-lactam would likely suffice from this point on, and may be taken orally. Case 2, we speak to Mr. Wiley two days later. He states that his respiratory issues have begun to resolve, and was curious what the cause ended up being. As suspected, his Legionella antigen came back positive. In the future, perhaps we should recommend he stay out of the motels with older AC units. Luckily, he is already on the correct antibiotic for empiric treatment. Had his symptoms progressed or stayed the same, we might want to consider a resistant strain. Since this doesn't appear to be the case, we'll tell him to call back if anything changes. With Ms. Hall, we follow up a few weeks later. The shankers will last a few weeks, with or without treatment, and it could take some time to make sure that the bug has been flushed from the system. She states that she had a very energized conversation with her ex, 
but she has not been sexually active since her last visit. On exam, the chancres appear to be healing, and some have gone away completely. She also reports no current complaints or symptoms. With syphilis, a follow-up is not always required. Resistance to antibiotics has not been a major concern, which does not hold true for other STD-causing bacteria. If she was still showing any signs or symptoms, it would be worth considering co-infection for one of these other bugs. Well, I hope you enjoyed this brief foray into clinical cases. Reading about a patient in study material can be quite boring and difficult to link to actual diseases. Following these patients over the course of a disease or treatment, even digitally, can help add experiential learning to the mix. This finally ends our fourth module long exploration of gram-negative rots. Try to go over any notes, flashcards, and other study materials so these categories of microbes don't get intermingled too much. As we reach the end of the course, the last few modules will be on some odd bacteria that don't fit clearly into gram-positive or gram-negative groups. If you recall how the gram stain actually works, you might be able to guess just why these future microbes are so different. The next module will cover mycobacterium.